All right, in this video, we're gonna look at After Effects and we're gonna play around with type on the path. So I'm just gonna create something very simple, new composition, and I'm just gonna keep it pretty simple, but I will call this type on a path. And this is fine, 1920, 1080, 24 frames per second, 15 seconds, doesn't really matter, we're just playing around here. And I'm gonna say, okay, so there we are. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. And what I'm gonna use, I'm not gonna bring anything in, I'm just gonna use some type right here and let's just play around with that. So number one, what I'm gonna do, create some type, then I'm gonna create a path, I'm gonna attach that type to the path and see how that works. So here's some type, I'm just gonna click inside here and I'm just gonna type in the word hello, like I do, there I go. And what I can do with that type, I can make sure the anchor points in the middle just by double clicking uh, on this tool, the pan behind tool, which is also, also the anchor point tool, holding down command, double click, and now the anchor is in the middle. I always like to do that anyways, uh, just so I know it's always there, which is great, right in the middle. Awesome. I'm going to shrink that down just a little bit because I'm going to play around with that a little bit more. Okay. So I have this. Now what I want to do is I want to create the path that the type is going to go around. So what I need to do is actually have the type selected, have that layer selected, and I'm just going to draw in with my pen tool some random mask, which is what's going to happen. So when I click on my pen tool, see that the cursor actually comes with a little square with a circle in it, which means I'm about to create a mask. Because if you use the pen tool or the shape tool, when something is selected, you're actually creating a mask. But that's a good thing in this situation because we're going to create a path that the type is going to flow on. So I'm just going to start clicking and dragging. Now, if I were to actually make a shape around this whole thing and, and close the path, it would actually make a mask where everything is actually only seen inside the mask or I could invert that later. But that's all I'm gonna do now. I'm not gonna close the path. I'm just gonna make a long path here. Now, keep in mind, it's a vector path. It acts like a vector. So therefore, I have control arms. I can move things around if I want to. I could really fine tune the path if I want to. And also, I can click on anchor points and hold down command I can click off of points get rid of them I can go to my pen tool do a long left click and do you know add vertexes delete them uh, convert them to um, curved or straight and that's it I can play around with that so if I even want to add another point right here I could there's another point so I could really start playing around with this and really fine-tuning uh, what I want this to look like go back to my selection tool move them around whatever the case is so you can really fine-tune your path okay so now what i want to do is i need to connect this type to this path so if i twirl down the layer hello and i go to my masks and i see i have mask one that's my mask that's great all right i have this i can play around with it a little bit i could feather the mask i'm not going to do much with that just yet but here i have my path options if i twirl down text path options and i say well the path I want to connect it to mask one, which happens to be the name of this one. It's mask one. All right, so now it just automatically gets connected to it. Perfect, that's it. Now I could reverse the path if I wanted to when I start animating it. I could do a few different things here. Force alignment, which is gonna force the alignment on the whole path, which I don't necessarily want on and off. Uh, so I can play around with that, but like I said, I'm not really gonna do that perpendicular to path, which that actually might play around. Let's see how that works. The real animation is gonna come with the first margin and last margin. So it's up to me how I wanna do that. But my CTI, my playback head is at the first, at the very beginning. And I'm gonna bring my first margin all the way back, all the way back. I'm gonna hold down shift to scrub it even more. And I'm gonna bring it right off the board. And I'm, mainly what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna make it go across the board like that. So that's my first margin. I'm gonna click on the stopwatch to start the animation. So there's my first um, keyframe and it remembers this information and then I'm going to move my CTI a little bit further two second mark and I'm going to move my first margin further I'm going to hold down shift just to make it go a little bit faster there I go done there's my animation it's going to flow on that path nice and easy now let's play around a little bit more let's say yeah you know what we wanted it not per uh, perpendicular or sorry on it is going to be perpendicular is there a big difference? That eh, plays around a little bit different. That's pretty cool. I could obviously easy uh, do an easy ease by selecting my keyframes and I could F9 or what I have to do is function F9 or I could have right clicked keyframe assistant and easy ease. And now I have a little bit more of play with the animation. Slow, fast, slow. And if I wanna really fine tune it, select those keyframes, graph editor, and I can click on, make sure I'm on the speed graph and I could really bring those in. So it's gonna go slow, fast, slow. So slow here, super fast here, slow there. So let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna click 
click off my graph editor. Oh, a little glitch there. So it kind of went slow, fast, slow. Now let's do the opposite. Let's actually play around with this. I'm actually going to bring this back. And I want to go fast, slow, fast. Let's see what that looks like. All right, I'm going to bring these up here. So it's going to start off fast, go slow, and then go fast. Let's play around just to show you the differences there. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, wow, that was really cool. Okay, so nice. Um, that's another way to play around with it. I am actually going to reverse that. Actually, it doesn't even matter. I'm going to play around. Not a big deal there. So I've put type on a path. I've animated it. Looks great. I'm happy with that. The next thing I want to do is actually play around a little bit more. This time I want to put type on a circle. So let's do that as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to type out some type first, just like I did last time. Hello. And I'm just going to bring that here. It doesn't matter where I bring it. I'm going to click on my double click on my pan tool, get that anchor in the middle like I like to do. And now I'm going to do make a mask again, but this time I'm going to make a circle. So it's going to go around the whole circle. So let's play around with that. I have the type selected or have that layer selected. I should say I'm going to click on the circle shape layer and I'm just going to. And once again, it is a mask. I'm just going to click and drag a circle. Now, unlike Illustrator, Photoshop and design, you can't scale it from the center, it seems. And that's OK. I'm sure there's a way around that. I currently don't know it. And that's all right. So let's just say that this is my mask, or at least this is the path I wanted to rotate around. Okay, same idea. Let's go to text and let's go to path options and let's choose the path I wanted to connect it to, which happens to be mask one. There it is, it connects it. And once again, first margin, I could just move it around and it's just gonna go around. Let me hold down shift to make it go a little bit farther. Okay, that's it. That's how it works, perfect. Now you might ask yourself, okay, you know what? The type, it looks good. Can I make the type a little bit smaller? Sure, make the type smaller here. If you try to make the type smaller here by going to the transform, here's what happens. I'm gonna change up my scale. Well, everything scales, the mask and the type. So if you just wanna change the uh, size of your type, you could actually change it here in the character panel. If your character panel is not open, window and character. And you could change up, quite frankly, anything you want. You could change up the um, typeface. All right, I'll just go there for whatever reason. Play around with that, make it a little bit smaller, whatever the case is. And now I can start animating it. Now you still might say, you know what, the mask, I wish the mask was a little bit bigger. So what you could do is actually select the mask so both don't move at the same time. And with that mask selected, you could actually Command T or Control T. And what that does, it puts a bounding box just on the mask. So now the type's not gonna change size, but the mask will. So what I can do from here, the anchor point's in the middle, I'm just gonna click and drag, hold down shift, and look what happens. Even the type is still snapped to it. No matter what the size, the type is still connected to it, which is really cool, great, and I could always align that right to the composition. Oh, I don't wanna do that. I see where the anchor point is. Okay, and that's it. Now what I could do, let's actually do last margin this time. So I'm gonna click on last margin. <clears throat> And I'm going to move that CTI like just like that. Okay, just first I am going to, uh, sorry, last margin again, my apologies. I want to make sure that yes, that is connected. What I should have done is move my CTI over and I'm going to scrub it so it goes right back to its initial position. All right, so I'm going to scrub. It's moving, it's moving, it's moving, and it's going to go right back to its exact same position, which is right there. And I can see how that animation is going to go. All right. Now, if you had a very specific logo, potentially you had some, it was in a circle format and you wanted to kind of have something rotate around it. You could totally do it just like that. You could change your type at any time, double click on the type and type in uh, whatever you want. I'll just do this again. Hello. Hello. Now things might change a little bit depending on the size of this. Yeah. So it kind of started here no it's actually it, it did exactly what it was supposed to do that was the center of the type and it ended at the center of the type now if i want to i'm going to go a little one step further and i'm going to do a little bit more here i'm going to have this continuously loop so i it doesn't just rotate once it just continues to go and go around and that's a quick little expression we're going to add these are actually really simple really quick it's a little bit of script it's all i have to do on my keyframe here or sorry on the stopwatch i'm just going to uh hold down well, oh, press the wrong one. I'm going to hold down option and click on the stopwatch. If I click on option, click on the stopwatch, what opens up is the expression. Now there's already currently expression on there telling it what to do. What I'm going to do is just press enter after that initial expression. 
and I'm just going to type in the word loop. And these are going to come out for me already. And the one I want is loop out. I'm just going to double click on that. That's it. So now that's all I have to do is press play. It goes once, even though the keyframe stopped there, it's going to keep on doing it over and over and over again until the end of the duration of this particular video. And that's it. So pretty simple way to put some type on a path but also put type on a circle, separately play with the type, separately play with the mask. And then obviously, we could obviously play with the mask too if we want to. Like I said, we could always add different uh, vector, what they call as vertexes or anchor points. And we can animate it and then loop that animation so it just continues to go.